You've been making beats for a while now and they sound really good. The melody is perfect, the drums sound fire and you think the world is ready to hear your music. But then you go on YouTube and realize that your beats don't hit nearly as hard than the ones from other producers. You feel sad and ready to give up. But please don't, because today I will teach you a few ways to make your beats sound hard and loud. Before we get into the first trick, you need to understand something really important. We are not mixing and mastering engineers, we're beat makers. When an artist buys your beat, he's probably going to the studio to record his vocals. Then the mixing engineer will take all the sounds of your beat and mix it together with the vocals of the artist. All we gotta do is make sure that the beat sounds fire to get the rapper's attention. To do that, we're gonna make a beat first. I created this melody. Sounds great. Next, I'm gonna lay down a simple but aggressive 808 pattern. Let's add a quick drum pattern and now the loop sounds like this. That, that's perfect. And now it's time to level the mix. You can adjust the volume in the channel rack or in the mixer track. Some people say it doesn't matter, but it actually makes a huge difference. Because with the gain knob in the channel rack, you adjust the volume before it's sent to the mixer, which means before slot one. When you use the fader in the mixer, you adjust the volume after the effects change. Open up the playlist and here you can see our pattern. Right click it and choose split by channel. Select the melodies by holding shift and clicking them and then right click them. Then choose quick render. Now you have these wave files, which can come in really handy later. Create a quick arrangement and once that's done, send all the sounds to the mixer. I like to make a bus for my drum sounds and one for my melodies. Then select the instruments and send them to the bus only. Now we can easily mute the drums or put effects on all of them. To level the beat, mute everything and start with the melody. Then I like to level the 808. After that, add the other sounds, one by one. When you're done, it's really important to fine-tune the volume of the elements with all the mixers enabled. That way you can hear the entire mix at the same time. Make sure to leave a little headroom, because you're gonna need that for the last trick in this video. The next button you need to click is the subscribe button. That is if you like the video, of course. We're gonna make the beat sound as crispy as on YouTube, but first we need to clean up the sounds. I mentioned these tricks in one of my last videos, so if you already know them, you can skip this part. First, put the kick and 808 in mono. That way it sits in the middle and the rest of the mix has more space. Then if it's necessary, remove the lows from the melody. We do this to make space for the lower frequencies, such as the bass or 808. But be careful with this, because sometimes the character of your melody sits in the lower frequencies. And then of course you don't want to cut them out. Next open up a compressor on the drum bus. Create an aggressive compression like this. Then in the effects chain, turn down the mix knob. This will then glue the drums together. Next, you also want to sidechain the kick and snare with the 808. I already made a video about that, so go check it out. Click the little eye icon. The next step is gonna change your beats forever. We're gonna make it louder and crispier, but we can do that in a few ways. First one, throw a soft clipper on the master channel. Now just turn up the threshold and play around with it. Let me explain how it actually works. With the soft clipper, you can make the sound louder without it clipping. This is done by gently compressing the master signal. With the threshold knob, you can set the threshold of how much the audio signal will be compressed. Then with the post gain you can make the compressed signal louder. This works perfectly fine, but what I like to do is add another soft clipper on top of the previous one. Then turn the threshold all the way up and adjust the post. This will change the master volume before the other soft clipper. It gives you a little more control. The next trick is a little bit more complicated, but it's worth it, so write it down. First, add a compressor to the master chain to glue everything together. These settings can be different for every beat, but for me it's always around these values. Underneath the compressor, open up a soft clipper, then open up a limiter and leave them open at the same time. Turn the ceiling all the way up, because we don't need that. Instead, turn down the saturation for something like minus 2 or 3 dB, depending on how much room you want to give the artist. This will make sure that the transient will be cut off rounder instead of just everything that hits the ceiling. Next, go to the soft clipper and decrease the threshold. Increase the post gain until you see the transient reaching the red bar. The 
this technique makes sure that the master isn't oversaturated and it gives you more room for the artist to play with. This is definitely a useful technique, but if you combine it with these tricks, your mix will sound even better. Goodbye.